please welcome to the stage Brittany Hicks and Jessica Couch. Hi, everyone. All right. So thank you, everyone, for being here today. My name is Brittany Hicks. I'm one of the co-founders of Fayetteville Row. This is our agency, you guys, and I am Jessica Couch. I am the other co-founder. Super excited to chat with everyone today. So hopefully this will be fun for you guys, too, and you learn a lot. So we're going to jump right in and start talking about the new ecosystem that we exist in. We all know that retail is changing. Absolutely. And I love this slide because I feel like it really takes us back in time to the history of retail and how we've all engaged with the consumer experience and brings us forward into the new ecosystem. So talk to us about that, POV. Absolutely. So right now we're in a consumer-centric economy. And what that means is that the consumer decides everything, right? So back in the day, you were probably landlocked by your local malls. Mm -hmm. Those were the only things that you could go and find to shop. So you didn't really have the internet or globalization like we have now where you have so much access. As a result, those brands and retailers told you what was the trend. It told you what to wear. It told you, you know, how things were going to go. Now, trend and style comes from the bottom up. So mm -hmm. you have the customers telling houses that, hey, this is what we want. This is who our culture is. This is the type of products we want. And we can see that reflected. And it's super important to note that because it's changed how we should do business and fashion and when you're thinking about your own businesses. I completely agree. And thinking about how our clients, retailers, partners consider assortment curation, looking at how they're marketing, looking at social commerce, it's a totally different time. The market has been completely disrupted by customers having more access than they've ever had before. Absolutely. So in our eyes, our agency sees true sustainability as matching people to products on a one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. Now, we're far from doing that right now, but it's super important that the designers of tomorrow think about how innovative they could be by whatever you create needs to be for a specific person. Mm -hmm. So whether you do this with persona development or better segmentation, you cannot afford to just make things because you like it alone. Mm -hmm. We totally get the artistic approach, but everything and the consumer-centric economy is about solving a problem. And in doing so, we're able to met, um, balance shareholder and stakeholder value. And you couldn't do that before, right? So if you have shareholders, you're always trying to please them. So they might tell you, we only want you to make this or do this because it's going to make us money. But when you have customers, you have to cater to that customer. And often that's not balanced. So you see a lot of companies like Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. They're in trouble right now and their stock just plummeted because one, you're trying to charge us $20. For, and we're not going to do that. And you won't let me and all my sisters watch the same show, so we're out. Yeah. So that's what, <laughs> that's what happens when you don't balance shareholder and stakeholder value. It creates a terrible experience, and then people will leave. Yeah, and so for our agency, it's really important that we focus on the microcosm, understanding that specific customer, who she is, what she wants, where she shops, who is she following on Instagram, so that you know exactly how to get to her. That microcosm will inform the macrocosm, and it's important because here's the issue we see. So let's talk about this. These are the numbers, right? So we know fashion has a huge sustainability issue. It's the number two pollutant overall. Mm -hmm. Big problem. I'm not just talking about pollutants with you know, the dyes, the finishing, the actual textile processing, the factories overseas in Bangladesh that are falling apart and you know, not having fair wages. We're talking about just here in the US, $62 billion of returns. Crazy. Now, Crazy. Most of the time on your balance sheet, you can account for returns, right? So we can make amends for that. We can move money around. But more importantly, there's $50 billion of dead inventory. And what dead inventory tells us is that you're creating things that nobody wants. That right there is waste. And those two numbers combined create about 17 million tons of textile waste. So when we're talking about the importance of consumer centricity, mm -hmm. this is why it's important you have a couple times to really wow your customer, mm -hmm. right? Right now, the customer is like dating a baddie. Mm -hmm. She's got options, she looks good, she knows it. You can take her out on a date and do something cheap, she might come back to you, but if she doesn't, she's done. And it's your job to listen to what she wants, create what she wants so that you're not caught up in returns, which 70% are due to fit. So obviously, brands aren't listening to what type of bodies they need to cater to, right? Mm -hmm. They're still putting stuff on mannequins, and mannequins aren't humans. And then you'll have the dead inventory where your stuff just sits in a warehouse the whole time. And whose pocket does that burn a hole in? 
yours. Yeah. So all of that and the waste, you have to start thinking about the customer segmentation and how your products solve a problem. Now we get this from tech yeah. because we're super tech minded. Both Britt and I come from a tech background, but you can absolutely implement these things into fashion in the same way if you're thinking about the future of sustainability. Yeah, and looking at it from my perspective with my background being in merchandising, we can look at the numbers in terms of total sales, in terms of slow turn, in terms of dead inventory and annual returns, but you're also wasting a lot of money and resources upstream in the supply chain. You're developing products in your design rooms that no one wants. You're assorting products and colors that people aren't gonna pick up and purchase. Then you're shipping products overseas on a boat, flying it here that no one's going to even look at in a store because you're oversaturated with products that people are not interested in. And so in terms of wanting to balance that value, we really have to think about the beginning of this process and really working up the supply chain to be more efficient in how we think about creating products and getting them to our customers. Absolutely. Now, if you don't believe us, just take a look at some of the research. So there's three main um, categories in which we absolutely have to be mindful as designers of the future, yeah. right? So personalized experiences. This is data collected from actual customers who are gonna buy your products. They want something personalized. Mm -hmm. How can you think about personalization in your business? It's all about segmentation, right? You have to know exactly who you're building a product for down to her body type, yep. down to how does she gain weight? Because when you're grading, do you need to split the grading or do you need to adjust it for a certain body type that's gonna gain weight differently? How are you communicating those things? All of those things are super important. And lucky, I'm sorry, y'all can y'all hear me? Okay, and lucky for us, we have technology that can integrate throughout every part of this process that you probably need to be privy to. And then you have a desire for better fit. Yeah. As we saw in the previous slide, 70% of returns are about fit. And I know, I, I can just tell already, <laughs> how many people have returned something because it fit poorly? Okay, great. How many people haven't returned it because you're like, I don't even want to go through this process, I'm just going to put it, exactly. So now it's like, I'm not going back to that brand, but this, is so important to think about when you're thinking about the future of fashion and what sustainability looks like. Yeah. You want to be the 20% of a closet that is worn 80% of the time because mm -hmm. that's how people view their closets right now. You don't want to be the thing that they tried it once and it's like, mm, whack, not that good. Mm -hmm. right. And then finally, the power of peers. So social commerce, how many people are aware of what social commerce is? Okay, great. I'll inform everyone else. Social commerce is the fact that consumers are making their conversions and purchase decisions through social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So you have YouTube, yep. TikTok, Instagram. So if you're doing traditional marketing, thinking that you're gonna place an ad in a magazine or somewhere on a billboard and people are gonna interact with your brand, you you're wasting start. your time. It's social. So even when you're thinking about how you're gonna adjust your marketing and your product and your assortments for that, it encompasses really understanding the personas you develop what she wants, what he wants, what he's shaped like, where he's going to get his information. Yeah. And that can seem intimidating, but it's not. Yeah, and I think even in this new sphere of social commerce, you also have to think about anti-marketing. Anti-marketing is very dangerous for your brand. So it's great to have someone support you and say, hey girl, I tried these jeans, they fit great, I love them, they had my booty sitting Word up, mouth. they tucked me in, they did yeah. all the right things. But imagine how powerful it is when she says, I tried those jeans and I hated them. You're not even going to pick them up. You're not going to look at them. When you see them on Instagram, you're going to say, don't show me yeah. this again. Because the power of what your friends say is so impactful in this environment. And consumers are looking at the consistency of your brand. So how you're marketing it. Are you saying the right things? Did you say something in copy that didn't really match what they saw in the image? Are you marketing curly ha hair shampoo for someone who has wavy hair that's not kinky? We see this all the time with brands that we know and love, and we will cancel you. We live in a culture now where, again, you have more choices than you've ever had before. Yeah. You don't have to go on that second date if you won't feel it. No, you do not. It's not that important to us. So remembering personalized experiences are going to be important for your brand, making sure that the fit is appropriate, whether we're talking about apparel or just the product market fit for hair, beauty, skincare, and other trends. And then the power of peers is super important. Absolutely. And don't get too intimidated by fit. We're not because we're not just talking about plus size. That's mm -hmm. a huge industry, but the non-standard sizing industry is a $22 billion industry. That's petite, that's tall, that's I need a longer inseam, I need a, a smaller collar. That demographic is a huge industry that needs to be catered to as well, and it's up to you to build the products that matter for that group as well as to communicate it because that's equally important. Yeah, and then one thing I'll add just within the power of peers and understanding who 
to market to. Strike the Shepherd is a concept that we like to talk about with our brands and brand partners because it's really great to reach 5,000 people with impressions, but what if you could go to the one person who's the shepherd for that group? And that shepherd is really important because again, she's going to trust her opinion. And so a lot of times when we're building matrices or trying to understand how to develop those customer campaigns or even influencer campaigns, it's really important for us to make sure that we understand the segmentation, understand the niche market, and then we're able to evangelize and partner with these teams to ensure that they're touching the right people. Exactly, because all influencers aren't equal, right? There's mm -hmm. some people you're like, okay, you just have a following, but if you see an influencer with your body type or with something that you're having a problem with, you're gonna trust them more than you just trust any celebrity that's out there pushing a product for a price. Mm -hmm. And consumers are smart, so they know the difference. So your shepherds of industry can be people that represent the demographic in which you seek to serve. It doesn't matter if you're creating bras or swimsuits or whatever, think really deeply about who actually represents that community and make sure they're properly represented because that's gonna be a big part of getting your products in front of people. Totally. So when we talk about sustainability and we look at those three core systems that are really just best practices to integrate for your teams, sometimes when you hear technology, that can be really intimidating, right? Because everyone's like, what's the newest tech? What's the greatest tech? Who's investing in what? And how do we even integrate this into our processes? And it can feel like a really heavy lift, right? If you are managing 300 doors for a retailer that's national, well, which tech am I gonna integrate across all 300 doors, that can be expensive. But being tech-minded means thinking about how we test and scale over time. So we focus on agile development, we focus on testing with consumer sentiments, and really infusing the voice of the customer into everything that we do. And we're gonna be very honest, if you're not thinking like this in your fashion business, your fashion business is not gonna make it. You know what fashion has lacked over the last 20 years where you can see like the major brands have lost 50% of their value? I don't know if you guys have invested in any Macy's or anything like that and saw it get kind of go down. It's because they're not thinking about integrating the right technology. And it's not hard, it's just about best practices. So in your design room, there's 3D design, there's body shape analysis tools, Body shape analysis tools will tell you, let me see a woman, age 40, who is 5'4 and a size 8. Let me see her in different states. Because if I know I'm marketing my product in the South versus the Northeast versus California, those are different bodies. So I'm going to have to know, as a designer, what to produce so that when we have the assortment in these geographical locations, they match the actual demographic that's available. That's how smart you have to be as a designer now or you have to have a research R&D department. Sometimes when we work with our partners, we're kind of like their outsource R&D because it's, it's like, you know, designers want to design and that's beautiful and fantastic, but you have to also design an experience, mm -hmm. design your supply chain, design uh, sustainability into it and not just in the performative ways of saying like, well, we use eco-friendly bags, that's cool, but are you really gathering the right information to make sure every product you create is being purchase and it stays in that closet and they're coming back and it's sustainable. Yeah. And so when we think about technology, it doesn't always have to be the latest tech or an app or some sort of integration that you're putting on your sales floor. It can just be best practices that help the yeah. customer make more informed decisions. So whether that's an appropriate size chart or predictive analysis around what size she should be wearing as she's transitioning from one brand to the next, or any of the things that you see here, updating your supply chain, consumer behavior, personalization. But again, it all goes back to being customer centric and infusing the customer voice into every single thing that you do. Yeah, it's like you just wanna keep having a conversation. Now we developed this, um, this technique from the time that I spent in grad school, right? So when I was in grad school, I was really studying tech and how tech was gonna integrate fashion. And so this particular technique can help you when you're thinking about what type of solution do we need to bring into our business? What type of tech should we consider? Mm -hmm. What you wanna do is do a customer segmentation. That's not hard. It's like I'm making denim for big booties. What type of big booties? Big booties in small ways, big mm -hmm. booties in big thighs, big booties that are are you know manufactured big booties that are natural. It's something that simple where you're like, okay, that's my target demographic, like Good American. Mm -hmm. Good American said, I'm gonna make denim for big booties and small waist and use all the language that people have to solve their problem. So their products, though it is fashion, it's also almost tech-minded, right? They use all the words, the waist gap, all these things that they source from Instagram when people are talking about their experience with denim and they incorporated those things into their marketing because they segmented their customer base so well. And then you wanna have a goals assessment. 
you might be focused on, okay, returns mm -hmm. or dead inventory or simply a marketing strategy. You don't have to focus on all of those at once. Just pick what you want to focus on first. You want to do a structure review. So what do you really have the bandwidth to create? Mm -hmm. Who can you really bring in? Who can you partner with? You know, who's going to help you get your products out and make it make sense? Customer feedback. You can go on Instagram and see what customers think about your products or your competitors' products or mm -hmm. similar products. But gathering that information and scraping that information can save you a lot of time and energy. And um, finally, so your production and design methodology. Do you want to show somebody a 3D item first and let them pre-sell? Or do you want to go ahead and spend $1,000 to make the sample and kind of guess if they want it or not afterwards, right? I guess it's about how much money you have to burn. But there's so many ways that you can get smart about what your method of design and production is going to be if you think about it beforehand. Mm -hmm. And so once you kind of collect that information and you work with your team, you're going to analyze it. And that will let you know this is what type of tech we actually need. This may be where the gap is in our process. And you want to do this before you even pick out a fabric, before you spend that money, before you're going to sample makers, before you're adjusting your patterns. Do this first so that you only have to do it once. You do it once. You do it right. That's, that's the best thing ever. So with that, we are very excited to share our methodology. We're excited about all of the fantastic things happening in the industry that focus on sustainability and bringing this full circle to the customer. And we appreciate your time today. So thank you for having us. Thank you.